I want to thank everybody for coming to today. Um, this is something that we do. Café Palusa is more like a donuts and coffee that you have in the mornings. Um, so because we're in Hispanic Chamber, we kind of want to show our culture. Um, then I want our members to be able to embrace our culture. So that's why we have Palusa, which is um, sweet bread. You know, it's a it's a cultural thing and having coffee in the morning. So. I uh, really want to thank the um, Freeport Economic Development Corporation for sponsoring this event. Um, we do this once a month in different areas and um, we usually do this for them just to give them a platform to be able to talk a little bit about what's going on in the city of Freeport or you know in their um, their area. So I have Josh Mitchell that's going to be talking a little bit about what's going on in Freeport. Hello, thank y'all for coming out. Um, I just jotted down a few things that we've been working on with Freeport EDC. Um, I'm Josh Mitchell, I'm Vice President of the Board, so our President isn't here, he's got me speaking today. Um, but I guess in the day-to-day, -day, um, we have our business retention program, um, and so that's just making sure that businesses have what they need um, in the city and from the city um, to be successful. Um, a few other things that we're planning on and working on um, that we can focus on this year. Um, we have a, we've gotten Ginsler, which is, um, if you know anything about architecture, they are uh, the top, one of the top architecture firms, <laughs> uh, for sure in the country. Um, and so they are working on plans for um, just a boardwalk in downtown, kind of getting that Freeport Harbor um, vision plan, trying to make that a reality. Um, and then uh, as we know, um, or as many of you might know, Starbucks um, will be coming to town and we're trying to do our best to help them. Um, help them get acclimated to the area, help them uh, feel welcomed, you know, to foster that good relationship between um, businesses and the, the city. Um, and as well, we do like a lot, a lot, a lot of work with our museum, our local museum, um, just putting on events downtown, making sure that um, everybody knows, you know, what's going on and everyone feels like they know about the events happening um, in our downtown. Um, and we've got some people that came from Austin, I believe, to tell us, uh, and we're getting a report this weekend telling us ways that we can improve our downtown, what we can do with our downtown. As we all know our downtown right now, it's, you know, it's dead. There's nothing there. Um, so we're trying to make that, we're trying to reverse that, right? <coughs> um, we've awarded eight grants so far to different businesses in town. Um, and that's just another part of our business retention, just keeping businesses in Freeport, uh, having, allowing them to feel like they, they have uh, somewhere to go if they need extra help. Um, somewhere to go if they need extra funding for a project. You know, I heard we get hurricanes all the time. Hurricane comes through and destroys their roof. That can be the end of a business. And so with us giving these grants, it really helps them uh, to be able to pay for necessary improvements. You know, the population of this town is small. Um, so I would, I would guess it's probably pretty hard to have running your own business in such a small town. Um, so just making sure they have what they need to make sure their business can thrive and grow um, and they can actually stay in business so that they can you know, be successful, have a chance at success. Uh, we've got the mural project, and you'll see that on the corner of West Park and Second Street. And that's gonna be funded by Bacota, which is the Bay Area Council on um, Drugs and Alcohol. So stopping kids from, you know, make, or, uh, persuading kids to make those healthy uh, living choices, the right choices um, about what, what we put in our bodies, right, and how that can affect us. Um, so you can see that, and we're trying to make sure it's an, an interactive, Mural you've seen. Uh, I know in Austin you've got the, all I can think about in Austin is what says, I think it says, I love you, or I love you so much, something like that. Everyone takes pictures in front of it. Um, and we're gonna try to have something interactive. So whether it's a, a surfboard and you kind of like stand in front of it to make it look like you're surfing, because we're on the coast, right? Maybe it's seagulls, you look up and you're, you're looking at the birds in the mural. Um, something like that just to draw people um, out of their homes, right? Make them feel like they can, yeah. Oh, we could have a shark. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna write that idea down because we need a, I like that idea. I've got a dark sense of humor, but <laughs> I don't like the idea of the shark. That's my favorite so far. Um, so we'll see if the board goes with that. Um, and there's just other events that we sponsored in downtown. Um, the um, Mardi Gras Parade, we've got Cinco de Mayo Golf Tournament, um, the Riverfest Cook-Off. We, we are sponsoring Fishing Fiesta, which is happening um, on the 17th. Starting tomorrow. Starting tomorrow? Oh, okay. 
<laughs> okay, I'm a teacher. This is my today's Wednesday, right? It's okay. This is my third day of summer break, oh. and I taught summer school, so um, yeah, extra. And just anything else. Um, our last business thing that I've got Expo. on this list. Oh yeah, we had the business expo. I forgot about that. Um, and we just had local businesses come out, and we got to know them. They got to know each other. Once they can network, maybe you know somebody creates or has a business with wood, and maybe somebody needs wood for something. You know, they can collaborate and figure that out um, in that expo. Just getting to know each other, getting uh, feeling like they have a place to go to get whatever they need. Um, that's pretty much our part in, in the city of Cooper, making sure our businesses businesses that are here um, have what they need, and making sure the city is available for new businesses coming in. Because you know we've got to see um, some development in town if we want the town to be able to. You know, to not go bankrupt, to be honest, right? People spend money, that's how we make money, that's how the city makes money. So um, just making sure that um, economically the city is well off, the city is um, well funded, they're helping business, businesses that exist, and also um, encouraging new businesses to come into our town, making our town um, uh, more attractive, right, to outsiders, making our town uh, look more livable. Um, and housing is on our list, um, nothing set in stone yet, but it is on our list. So we do realize that housing is, there's a housing shortage in this town. <coughs> um, and so we're, we're working to make sure that we don't have that shortage anymore. <coughs> and that's all I've got on this list. Um, if anybody has any questions about any projects or any issues or anything, um, feel free to ask. The talk more about the housing shortage. Why is there a housing shortage in Freeport? Um, we have a lot of jobs, <coughs> so the plant, you know, is huge, um, and that brings a lot of jobs. Um, usually, I think, I, my guess is that the city probably got used to everyone going to Lake Jackson or Clute or, or Pearland or even living in Houston. They're willing to drive an hour uh, rather than living five, ten minutes from the workplace, um, and I think that's the main reason. Is there land that could be developed for Yes, housing? there's yes. a lot okay. of land. Yes, it is. So there's not a shortage of land, there's just no, no development there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I read recently about a Volkswagen potentially coming into this area. Is that still something that's viable? Uh, we are five I believe we start. I believe we start. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Kelsey? <laughs> Certainly. Yes. I don't want to say, I don't want to break the law, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, actually, that is something that the EDC did uh, recommend a tax abatement, and um, that is still pending, but they are they are planning on coming to Freeport and bringing with them uh, 260 to 300 direct and indirect jobs, 112 right on the site that they're planning to develop, and that is you know they are investing over 115 million dollars in the site they'll be creating additional 28 and a half million dollars worth of assessed value um, so it's a, it's a huge economic development boon uh, for the city um, you know we were in competition with a couple of other states and, and the port of houston uh, to have that but they're actually consolidating an existing site in in the port of houston and uh, an inland port location in Midlothian, Texas, has, has been bringing this this year. So we're really excited to work with, um, partnership with the, the Port of Freeport to make that happen, and uh, Brazoria County and, and Brazport because they're all participating um, in the uh, excuse me Brazport uh, College uh, District. They're all participating in the tax abatement, and that will all be finalized very soon. So it's exciting. In regard to the answer to your question regarding housing. Um, the city does have a number of location where um, a couple of hundred homes can be developed. Um, there's actually potentially three different areas that will allow probably up to maybe 270, 280 homes for new development. Um, but residential development in the city is, is hampered by the fact that um, we're kind of landlocked, even though it, you know, there's areas um, for development, there's not really it's not really developable because there's a lot of and the, on either end of the city, um, the land is is very expensive to develop because of the fact that it's low lying wetland impacted by um, you know storm surges, and so it's 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 impractical to develop for housing. Um, and on the other on the other end, it's all blue because it's water. Right. On the other end, you have Clute and Lake Jackson kind of that that lock us in for the ability to actually grow. So. It is a challenge because of the fact that our, our this, 
the city can't, there's not a whole lot of room for the city to grow and absorb developable land for housing. So we have to look really for housing development opportunities within the existing corporate limits. And also on that, I would add that we have to think of different ways that housing can happen. Um, right. You know, Texas was designed by the car, around the car. Um, uh, states like New York, Northeast, obviously that was people were on foot with their older states. Um, and so I know when I lived in, I went to school in San Marcos and they started looking at um, mixed use development. So you might have, um, you know, in downtown Freeport, you have all the buildings, right? So on top of whatever store, you have a place where people can live. Um, and I saw some of that in, uh, I went to New Orleans for spring break and I, here I am thinking about EDC. I saw some of that mixed use, I saw it in New Orleans. Um, and you'll see throughout the South, I think slowly we're seeing a little more of that where you have, you know, things are a little closer, which we're not used to that, right? We want our big yard, we want our one acre, but everybody can't have that. Um, and so that's another way that we can, you know, just capitalize on what we've already got. Um, you can go up, up a little bit, you know, because we can't really go out. Yeah, so in, and then vertical development also presents some challenges for our, our fire department <laughs> potentially. Um, so they have to be, make, make, have that, take that into consideration as well. So, um, but you know, there is, there things are looking great. I mean, we have the biggest issue for the city of Freeport has, has been some utility issues and um, the city was successful in getting about $12 million in grants to council issued a, a $5 million bond. So we have about $17 million worth of um, sewer improvements um, being for, being planned and, and implemented right now. They're in, being designed to, to go out for bids and construction. So um, that's a, that's gonna be a huge boon in the, in the city over the last three years, is, you know, including this year, we'll be doing about $7.5 million worth of street reconstruction and resurfacing. Um, you know, so that's another big infrastructure need that's, that is being addressed. So. I want to thank you guys.